right, 1210. Hello and welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Scott Tallon. I am uh, uh, teaching the School of Communication. And uh, Christina, now you'll do your self intro and then I'll do a little sort of preview of what we're talking about and then we'll get into your slide and take it from there. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And my name is Christina Domian and I teach in the um, Office of Global and Immersive Studies, OGIS, and the ELTA department, which is English Language Training Academy, short for English Language Training Academy. Thank you. And we have a real live AU student, Avery Gilliam. I yourself. am Avery Gilliam. Thanks, um, Scott Down, for um, inviting me to this panel. I'm a junior at American. I'm currently going to my second semester here um, and I'm a gender studies major with a communications minder, minor. I'm really excited to be here. And I thought it was important to have a student uh, so we could hear from their perspective what feedback means to them, how it works for them. So that is why Avery's here. I'm just going to start off by saying three words. Feedback neutral. When I say this to my classes, sometimes the heads tilt a little bit. You know, well, isn't there positive feedback or isn't there negative feedback? I try and frame it that the feedback is neutral and even the stuff that's unquote negative is really designed to help you. And that's really what you want to have happen. But the idea is to make it more low stakes, less personal, right? So just feedback's neutral and it's up to the receiver of the feedback to decide what to do, right? And they might get conflicting ideas, it's up for them to decide. So this frame of feedback is neutral, I have found to be very helpful. So just want to say that there. Um, we sent out and shared the Financial Times article, recent one about feedback, which prompted the idea for this session and another video. And now Christina is going to take us through some slides and then we're going to get into some discussion because we want to hear from other faculty in terms of what do you do? What has worked for you? What has not worked for you? What feedback have you gotten? So that's sort of the structure of things. And we'll start off now with Christina taking it over with the slides. Um, and I guess our first slide right here is, um, is about our participants. Um, can you go ahead and share your most effective feedback giving techniques with us? And how do you know that it works? You can use the chat function or you can just unmute yourself and um, raise your hand or you can just unmute yourself and uh, tell us what you've been doing feedback wise. I just put mine in the chat. Samantha with the sandwich. Thank you. Could I actually ask what the sandwich technique is? Is that about, you know, sandwiching it between compliments? Because I have heard that. Samantha? Um, yes. Um, so, yeah, basically, we start with a positive comment, something you, you like the most or just grabbed your attention and then comment on something that can be improved, but maybe it's not working well. And then you end up with... Uh, a positive, another thing you like. The sandwich technique. And we got some others in the chat. Christina with single point rubrics, Melissa uh, asking to respond on the feedback in the next assignment. Bruce Berger, comments in the margin and bold. So Avery, while we're looking at this, why don't you share a feedback technique that has worked for you uh, in one of your classes without naming the professor, but just tell us what did the professor do that worked for you and, and why? Um, a recent um, final paper of mine was graded by basically uploading um, as a pages document with individual comments on all the lines. And I found that the professor gave me really detailed um, feedback and comments, I think because the format allowed them to um give me like a paragraph um at least um of commentary um so basically i found it helpful that they were very detailed and that they had the space to include other like um sources that would be interesting if i continued with the subject matter um they engaged with the different parts of the paper 
Um, so for me, written feedback is usually really helpful. Avery, is there anything you've seen that's too much feedback, too detailed? Um, that's a really interesting question. I've honestly more struggled with sometimes rubrics are so detailed that they kind of get away from allowing the student to actually tackle the assignment because when you're looking at so many um, individual pieces of criteria and not sort of how you would just structure a paper, for example, that can be um, a little bit off-putting. I don't know if I've ever received too much feedback, but I do think sometimes professors highlight things that are maybe not as significant to the assignment, sort of. Um, I don't think there's a thing as too much feedback as long as it's you know helpful in some way, um, honestly. But sometimes yeah. comments will be stuff like good title page and you're like, okay, is the thesis statement also good? <laughs> But right, as long right. As so there's, both, the, the, there's the case of, so do you find there's too little feedback sometimes? Sometimes, yes. I've gotten um, grades that I find maybe questionable or even grades that I'm happy with, honestly. Um, I had zero feedback or comments available with the submission and that's complicated because there is a part of me as a student that wants to know what I could have improved on so, and what I'm maybe doing right. So I think that's, that's something to underscore that we have a student here sharing that sometimes they get a grade, but there's no feedback, which to me sounds shocking and hard to believe um, because in the end, feedback's more important than the grade, at least to me. Can I just add, I mean, add one? Can I just add one thing about um, feedback? So it was probably ten years ago when I participated, in, well, even over. 10 years ago now, <laughs> 2024, it was probably 12 years ago, I participated in a, in a workshop about providing feedback. And, um, and so the facilitators said, okay, how do you provide feedback? Give us a sample of your feedback. And some people had, you know, brief written feedback. Some people had this elaborate, like almost a page long feedback and and so that's when the facilitator said, well, you know, you can continue typing an essay or a paragraph, but what if you just use a rubric and a very specific rubric that students can use before they, so this is not something the students see only once you return their work and then attach the rubric, but also something that the students can see beforehand and sort of use it as, um, as a list of guidelines. And, and I just thought, oh, oh, I can save so much time on giving feedback if I do that, because typing up every single one. But so by now, what I do, I, I use um, rubrics, but as somebody said that on um, in our chat already, that I make sure that once I submit the grade on Canvas, I leave just a one liner, like I really liked something or, you know, well, make sure that you revise it and then you can earn this. So there, there's a at least a one liner on Canvas in the feedback um, section so that they, well, I hope that the students will then really pay attention to my detailed feedback in the room. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's, uh, ask, let's, let's, let's ask a student, Avery, do you, and maybe also your friends, roommates, others that you talk with, or is the feedback read, especially on Canvas, or do students just skip to the grade? Or what do you hear, knowing that this is, you know, a bit anecdotal? I think the, but what do you? Sorry, <laughs> I think the probably most popular response is you get, especially Canvas emails you that an assignment has been graded, but it doesn't tell you what the grade is. So, I think the process is check the grade. Um, however you feel about the grade, you then look for the feedback or the um, comments to, you know, either back up the grade or um, whatever. But I have had friends who receive a grade that they're not happy with and either, and this happened to me as well, um, either don't have any comments to maybe illuminate what specifically caused them to get that grade. Um, and they've also been frustrated, not sure about how to move from there when the professor hasn't necessarily given them um, as much to work with. So even... Um, like a single line is helpful if there's room for improvement um, in the grade submissions. Sorry, someone's hand is raised. I want to make sure everyone gets to talk. Very helpful to hear. Uh, do we have some raised hands, Christina, that you see? Yes, Samantha. 
Um, yeah, so I use the rubric. I have the rubrics on before the assignment is due so they can do it as a checklist too. But when I, I teach graphic design, so it's very technical. So besides the sandwich technique, which is for in-person critiques, and I, I when I grade them finally, because they get a feedback before they turn it in, like for real, like in the in the middle of the process. Towards the end, when when they get their final grade, I do the rubric, and whenever they don't get full points, I write down why they didn't get full points, so they get a chance to resubmit if they want to fix it. Because it's graphic design is always like an ongoing process, so they can always improve on those specific technical things. Um, so I have had good results because students. Um, a lot of them resubmit and fix all these little things so they end up with the full product and they accomplish all the goals of the project. So I think that's kind of a really good um, strategy. Uh, and interesting, in my writing classes, I realized that feedback in the drafts. So I, I, we have one or two drafts, they get feedback and there's no grade. Avery, you did that with the advertisement assignment, right? Yes, I was going to say that's also super helpful is um, feedback in the middle of a project. Um, professors don't always do that. And of course, if it's, you know, an assignment that you only have a week to work on, then maybe there's not really a chance for a mid project check in, but definitely it's super helpful to get that feedback before the final submission. Um, because um, even if you're on the right track and a professor sort of tells you that you could maybe just tweak this one thing that can be really helpful in between the drafts and the final project. Right. And um, creative classes, arts classes, graphic design are really good examples. I think of a really good feedback um, setup in the in-person critiques. I think everyone is able to um, feel a little more comfortable when they're sort of judging the work together and yeah, having a rubric that can be checked in on during the assignment process is more helpful, I would say, than just being given a rubric, a rubric and told to try to adhere to it versus actually having the assignment compared on a rubric after it's been worked on. So the idea that feedback along the way up until the final submission of assignment, depending on the class and the possibility to do it, can be helpful. I, I, and I have found that. And since we're already touching on why we should get give feedback and why we should receive feedback, let me just move on to the next slide, which kind of sums up, I don't know how many of our participants read the information that we sent out, um, I did. The, <laughs> the, the article and, and the, um, the video as well, but to just to sum up, the three, if, if we wanted to highlight three um, takeaways from the, um, the article itself, uh, basically feedback works when it's given within a reasonable time frame, meaning students can revise and perhaps resubmit, um, specific and actionable, so then the students know exactly what they need to do with it to make it better, and balance, then that's the, saying some good things, but then also saying what to correct and being, you know, direct about it. And just one thing before I'll, I'll let everybody else uh, speak, to me, it is still surprising when students come up to me and I say, and they say, can I resubmit it? And I'm thinking, yes, that's, that's why I gave you the feedback. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have just given you a grade. But and, and so now I make sure that when I leave that comment on Canvas, I say, in order to increase your grade, you need to follow my suggestions in the grading rubric and resubmit it by whatever deadline. And so there's the standard part on Canvas. And, and I try to to be, you know, quite, you know, rigorous and kind of harsh on the first draft. So then students actually feel like revising it because if wow. I just take a few points away, it's like, it's still an A minus, I'm still good. But if I, if I really take those points um, away, then it's sort of an encouragement. And of course they, they will get their points back. It's just, I want to motivate them. Like, I really want you to work on this. Don't just let it slide and move on to the next what, what class is this for because i think it does all this depends in the context of the 
the class, the pedagogy, what's happening, what class is that for? Because that seems like an extra effort beyond just looking at pre-submitted drafts. Um, that's for all of my classes. I can't say if there's one where I don't do this. It's for, so yeah, it's, what, what, it's, it's extra what, work. What, for what, are, what are the examples? Complex the problems, classes? complex problems. It's um, intercultural understanding and the language courses as well. I would say that in all these courses, um, growth is something that I want to measure. And so students need wow. to show me that they are learning and they are, you know, I really want to promote that growth mindset. Yes, you didn't, you didn't know it this time. You, you didn't quite do it right, but you know. I, I love that concept of a growth mindset. Uh, that's wonderful to hear and a reminder to us that we're not grade giving machines. That's really our end goal. It should be really the growth of the student and the learner. The grades are indicative of what they've done, but in the end, the feedback has more lasting value than the letter grade. Especially, I also think um, for students, because obviously we're newer to the experience and usually newer to the subject matter that we're writing about, um, sometimes you're sort of not aware of how good or bad maybe a piece of an, a, um, submission is until the professor points it out, basically just getting a comment that's like, oh, this is really interesting. This makes me think of, you know, a different reading or a different thing we talked about in class um, is maybe a connection you as the student might not have made um, because you just have um, less exposure to it so far in your life. So. Um, yes, I think that's a very helpful reminder. More helpful than just students, a grade. Stu yes, students who come into this sometimes with no real background, that's why they're in the class sometimes. Christina? They're just things that you don't necessarily think about that are. And I don't mean to rush us through, I just want to move on to sort of the first specific. But Bruce, you have your hand up, so go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. So I teach uh, mostly in the writing studies program. And I looked at research uh, indicating that when you associate a piece of work with a grade, letter grade, a number grade, that students pay more attention to the grade uh, and less to the comments. And so this semester, I'm changing my course to mostly labor-based grading uh, with, with the idea that uh, by taking a specific grade out and having, you know, students grade ultimately based on how much work they do as measured by submission of certain number of projects uh, that they will uh, actually pay more attention to in um, the, the substantive uh, comments that I make. We'll see how that works out, but uh, there's some research to um, say that dissociating a grade from the comments uh, helps the students uh, deal better with the comments that are made. I don't know if Avery has a view about that, that but that's what I'm trying. And others in our program are, are have been doing the same thing for a few years. Avery, what's your reactions? Thank you, Bruce. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I do think students pay more attention to the grade initially, but if you get feedback that has reason to stick with you or that is um, that is clearly engaging with what you submitted, that I think is, yeah, ultimately more meaningful. But um, I appreciate the labor labor based grading system. I know it's um, not in every class, but I do think it's helpful for people to realize um, that it's not just about turning in an assignment and getting a grade and passing the class. I mean, it is in some ways. That's what, obviously what you want to do, but you want to also be right. able to engage with the material right. and be engaged right. back with you know yeah. Yes, so it it, it just that. seems that we've gotten all a little bit too much focused on the grade, especially students and. I mean, I'm amazed at students so much pressure. And I say, if you're not going to grad school or on a scholarship, what is, why are you trying to get straight A's? And I share, when I was in college, I tried to get an A minus because I was involved with so many other things. I, I didn't have the bandwidth to get an A. I could try to get an A minus and do everything else, right? So it depends on that student and what they want to do. And Bruce, I want to uh, uh, cite what you said and underscored about, you know, disassociating the feedback from the grade. They seem related, they are, but they're two different things. And sometimes what I've done is give the feedback by audio recording, I email it, and I've not given the grade, right? So I let them focus on the feedback, and then later they get the grade. I've, I've made the notation, so at least it disassociates, and then they can focus on the feedback first. Yeah, if I Christina? could just 
Uh, Scott, yes, just Bruce. to respond to that, I've also felt pretty uneasy over the years in making fine distinctions, let's say between uh, 87 and the 88 and the 89. And, yep. uh, and I recognize that there's so much uh, arbitrariness in those distinctions that I'm trying to, you know, wean myself from that. Although, as I put in the chat, so for any grade higher than a B, I'm going to evaluate the quality of revisions and whether they actually address uh, critical comments, you know, uh, substantively or, or just ignore them. So there's going to be some evaluation there, which is going to go to a higher grade. But uh, to get the basic B, at least the way I've set things up now, it's just a, a matter of submitting things and then trusting students to who want to improve to pay attention to the comments. And that's part of it. The student has to be motivated to some degree, of course. Right. I think that um, we had a discussion about ungrading or labor-based grading um, in the complex problems um, program. And um, there are two groups of students that I, I'm concerned about. Um, but it's not a huge concern. It's just something to keep in mind with uh, sort of revolutionizing um, teaching this way. So obviously it's, you know, research backed. So they tested it out, it worked. Now, what happens if you have students who might be um, uh, anxious about not seeing something specific? And so sometimes I feel like what if it creates more anxiety than than anything else if they don't know what okay but what do I have what does it translate to like I I need to know because you have students like that who like I really appreciate this ungrading but what 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 is my GPA gonna be? <laughs> and um and so it can be domestic students and international students as well and um and I would say that if if people want to do this um uh, like I would love to hear how they introduce this concept in in a classroom, so then they they don't create any anxiety, so that the students know exactly how it happens. Because, like I said, you know, I I've heard from students about this, but, but what does it mean, and and how, and 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 who, and so I feel like you know I I would love to make sure that they they are you know assured about the process. And just to just to cite in the chat, there's two questions. One is from me, what is upgrading? And then Alyssa asked uh, to clarify more on labor-based grading, which is a term that's been popping up. But I think as Avery pointed out, it's scattered. Some profs do it and some profs, many profs don't. So can someone answer what is upgrading? Brian, maybe you, because you had put it earlier in chat and then Bruce, perhaps you or, or Mac or someone on labor-based grading? Um, I'll volunteer. Um, Thanks. I, I think they're similar uh, terms. The idea is that uh, the, the semester grade uh, more or less based on the completion of various tasks, um, you know, which, all of which get feedback, and however the professor wants to give the feedback, but, uh, but it's dissociated from a particular let's say an 89 or a 91 on a particular project. Uh, and the student, I, and I agree also, you know, there's a possibility for anxiety about this if students are not used to it. I mean, I just plan to try to explain it and answer questions in my first class. And um, uh, I don't think there's any way to avoid student anxiety, but I've always tell my students if they wanna know how they're doing, you know, on a semester basis, where it looks like their grade is going, you know, email me and I'll give them a best view of where they are at at, um, at a given time. And I also tell them, don't look at Canvas as a, as a basis for your grade because it's totally inaccurate and it doesn't count everything that I count like class participation. So I think alleviating anxiety is important and um, I don't think there's only one way to do it, but I, I do try to alleviate it to the extent I can. Avery? I would say, yeah, um, I agree that it's impossible to mitigate student anxiety. Um, it's hundred percent happening for everyone. Um, but feedback is definitely one of the ways. Um, so clear feedback and specific um, feedback and also being available for questions is really helpful for students. I know a lot of 
professors really understandably have pretty specific times that they're available by Zoom or office hours or email, including like, don't email me on the weekends, which I respect that boundary. But um, for students, it's just helpful to have um, the knowledge that if you have a maybe specific question or just even a general confusion about um, a topic or an assignment that your professor is willing to work with you in some way between now and the deadline. That's an important point for us in the classroom to remember to state verbally by text in syllabus that we're open, please reach out, especially if something's not clear. I, I try and do this myself as best able. The other thing to remember too is a good reminder is each student has got, let's say five professors and they could have, that student could have five different grading systems, right? And just the switching and keeping it in, keeping on track can be really tough for a student. Um, so just a friendly reminder and Christina, let's now just go a little bit into this slide and we'll move forward and we'll continue the conversation. Right, so this is something that we talked about, um, you know, how do you provide feedback? So we kind of started with the today's session with, you know, how do you do it in what format and does it work? And um, I guess um, you can see the list of uh, different types of feedback just to, to make you think, well, if up until now you provided written feedback, would you try an audio recorded message or a screen recorded message where you actually scroll down on the screen using the student's essay and just say, you know, here, I would, you know, I would redo this part. This is unfinished. This is incorrect. Uh, I used to do a lot of screen recorded message with Screencastify. It was very easy. I loved it. And then they made the service as a paid service. <laughs> so I kind of, you know, moved away from, uh, from that. But I've heard from uh, some of my colleagues that they actually take screenshots of um, student essays, if, let's say if the essay is only two, three pages long, so then the student actually has to take a look at the comment as opposed to just click on accept, which they can easily do without, you know, uh, putting any so, thought. So basically the student there would literally see their assignment and your comments as you scroll through. What is the voice type message as opposed to the screen recorded message? Oh, voice typed is just, you know, on Google Docs or in Microsoft Word, you can, because, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, tiring, it's exhausting to type everything. So you can just yes. click next to a sentence or a paragraph and you can actually just voice record your, uh, your comment. So it just make it, it just makes it, you know, easy. It's like um, text to speech service. Ah, uh, and Michelle had put something in the chat about voice type message on Canvas, but it doesn't seem to allow for punctuation, which of course is important, especially as a provider of feedback and a professor. Um, I'll just share on the audio recorded message and maybe Avery, then you can just give your honest feedback live on how it was for you in class. Um, but I'm not a good typist. So several years ago, and my handwriting's worse. So several years ago, I decided to just do recordings of just MP3 recording and email it. And why I like it is there's more context, there's more nuance. I can say, for example, hey, listen, I see what you're trying to do here, but so they understand that I understand what they were trying to do. Um, and also just that it's a little bit more personal because it's my voice, the professor's voice that they're hearing. So now let's ask Avery, how was that for you? Did it work? Uh, how could it be improved? What, what's your feedback on that feedback method? <laughs> um, I think it worked. It's actually pretty similar the way you do it to the screen recorded message because in your audio feedback, you usually tell the person to, um, the student to have their submission pulled up beside the audio feedback. So sort of they can look at, I mean, also as a student, you're familiar with your own work, but so you can sort of have it pulled up as the audio's being provided. Um, it's helpful, but I personally, just my learning style, I find um, written out versions of feedback more helpful, but um, I think you're clearer in your feedback when you deliver it in that format. Um, just, I guess, maybe because you're comfortable talking through the assignment that way. Um, so it's still helpful. No, that's good, feed that's good feedback though, because maybe I can even think about doing a combination of 
still audio text, but then a uh, type summary. Um, so it's a mix. So thank you. Thank you. Christina. Oh, did you want me to advance? Yes, this let's. Okay. <laughs> let's advance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we've talked about this, you know, balancing the feedback. I think this was the sandwich technique, right? So students can, uh, you know, they might feel uh, one way or another when um, they hear negative criticism. So yes, it's 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 good to to balance it out. Uh, I think one of the reasons why I started using these single point rubrics that I have been using because it's not it's not necessarily negative or positive. It's just, you know, this element is missing. This is incomplete. So it's kind of, I think that it's kind of neutral, but I don't know. Well, I think the more we emphasize that, the less personal and the less sort of criticized a student might feel, it's it's just neutral. And here's how you improve. It's, it's not an attack, you can get better. Um, so I try and as best say, this is neutral and you have to decide what works. And so Avery, maybe just comment on that. Like, makes sense that yeah, the student had, is the um, decider. I had um, originally written, written in my notes for this that not all feedback needs to be critical to be helpful, but I actually prefer your phrasing of neutral feedback because that is how I prefer to think about it because it is usually not the case that a professor just dislikes you enough as a student to give you, you know, useless feedback on a paper. Like that's not what's usually happening. Um, so um, feedback is um, specific to the work and how it can be improved as long as it's helpful, I think. Um, but I really like this point of directness, clarity and empathy um, to just try and look at it from the student's perspective if it doesn't make sense to you, but also to be clear about how it can be improved and um, how that's not in any way a reflection of the character or the ability of the student and just how the individual, you know, work the assignment um, can be Correct. It's not about the student. It's the about that one, that one assignment, right, Avery? That's it. It's that, mm -hmm. it's about that one assignment in the work on that one time. Yes. And how you can use that feedback going forward to improve the, you know, upcoming assignments. But um, yes, it should be rooted in the assignment and the um, Thank you. criteria. I'm looking for Christina. And just one thing about the, you know, the feedback and the, we are direct, but with empathy. I remember when I was a PhD student and I had a German uh, lecturer, a professor back in, in England. And, um, and whenever I talked to my British instructors, they were always very nice, but I never really knew what to improve because they were just way too nice about providing feedback. On the other hand, my German instructors said, oh, this is Shiza, you know, you have to do. And so I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I knew that I really had to work on something. So I just always asked him because I thought, well, then I knew exactly where it's it's something very wrong and I, I need to correct that so it's good to have that very direct feedback but then he was also very nice about it and you know he sometimes he laughed and apologized for using words but I know exactly how to improve yeah well we tend to pay attention to the unquote negative things of course and and we should and this gets into what you've already covered the delivery of it um I'm looking in chat and are there any anyone with a question or comment? Doesn't have to be a question, it can just be a comment or observation. Laura has one about ruinous empathy. What is that, Christina? Sorry, oh, Bruce kind of answered question, it. Because I'm still reading a different <laughs> no, comment. Bruce, Bruce answered it. It's it's sort of means not telling the students what they need to hear. Like you're I do know a professor that they're so nice, they never say anything negative and they're so empathetic likable but then in the end i've heard students say you know they're not sure what they learned and they're not sure how good they did because of just this excessive empathy for the student uh for all students um, i'm just reading more i've had professors that sort of um have similar um styles that they're 
usually especially for I think freshman classes and again it depends on the content of the course for something like AUX where it's kind of a new type of class for a lot of students you um, maybe want that really positive reinforcement um, but it's just not as helpful as um, or it's not as helpful in the long run as um, a positive feedback that's you know rooted in something the student actually did well versus you know just I don't want to say blind support because obviously professors should be like um, creating a supportive environment all of the time. But yeah, maybe telling what students, not telling students what they need to hear is a good way to think about it. Um, and I think Michelle the adds, a, adds a really nice note here in, in the chat saying that do you, um, do you flag a, a model response? And, and I think that, you know, that that's something, um, you know, you can always do when I, when I know that there is, you know, I'm, I'm assigning something that might be a little bit too complicated, might be challenging. I already give students um, like a sample. This, this is what it can look like, or it might look like, or a former student did something maybe about a different topic. So you can't really, you know, like copy it, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, just to show them, this is what an A work looks like. I think it, it really helps them. Christine, examples I, like I, that are I'm very helpful. A slight different, uh, Christine. I'm in a slight different. There's using a past student example as a model, which I also do, but I mean with a current class. So mm -hmm. if a student sort of does a great discussion board, I tell the others, "Hey guys, look at this one," and I try and pick a different student over the course of the semester. And then, yep. you know, and so I like using models from past semesters as, you know, here's a good example, but I also like to give a bit of praise going back to Avery's comment to give some positive feedback um, during the semester. Thank you. That's very helpful. And I, I do a little bit of shout outs afterwards so that, you know, there's some sort of general sense of here's some really good stuff and it can be done and maybe a motivation to students who didn't do as well grade wise. And, and also this idea of come talk to the professor, not when there's a problem after the grades given but along the way. And this delves a little bit into, you know, professor's personal perspective on things, office hours and a lot of stuff. But I think it's, it's, it's stuff to think about is how can we support the students in being open to them so that they can grow with our help in that class. There is a, a technical question, and since I'm not the biggest rubric person, I won't answer it from Brian about, can you define a single point rubric? Um, yeah, let me just actually skip a few slides to get there and then we can go back. Um, sorry, one more. No problem, because it just gave me an idea uh, and that I'll ask in a moment of everyone here. Okay, so a single point rubric is the one that has the criteria listed. And then basically, and you you can shape it in any or you know format it any way you, you want to. Some people do, you know, criteria in the middle, and then let's say on the left concerns on the right proficiency or you know how you met the target. And what I did, I um, I also, so I, I used to do that and then I provided a checklist separately for the students and now I just combined the single uh, point grading rubric and the students checklist into one. So for instance, if they have to write an annotated bibli bibliography, they should know exactly what to include. So they can see every single item. This is what I'm looking for. And so if, um, if, you know, it didn't start with a one sentence summary. I'm going to put an exclamation point there, exclamation mark and say, okay, this is missing or this is, you know, this is three sentences, but I said one and whatever they achieved and they get a check mark, but then they, they take a look at their own work and they provide their sort of own feedback before they submit it right here. And students are very candid and they will, you know, if, if they were unsure about, for instance, this interpretation of how the given source relates to the other ones, they just don't know if they did it correctly, they will put um, like a zero there, <laughs> or, you know, they, they can be pretty uh, strict about their own, uh, their own grading. So this is how, this is what the single point grading rubric 
And just to clarify, when you say single point, I see different number values. Are those points or something else? Two, one, there's a three? Yeah, so these are points. Um, but uh, I think that the single point get grading rubric didn't mean that everything it's would a have point the thing. same value. It's yeah, a yeah, single yeah. item. Yeah, right, right. And, so it's item by item. Yeah, so it's item so, by item. Uh, and the, the cool thing about this, when I was thinking about how to merge AI into the into the picture, I copied and pasted my original rubric that ended here. And I say I said, add some about AI use. And it was so smart that it actually tailored the points, the values based on my logic that was already in the, <laughs> the grading rubric previously. So now the students can, you know, can see that. Wow. So this leads to my question. Everyone, if you could uh, participate in a quick chat, I am not the bigger, biggest user of rubrics. So I was curious in, in, in terms of this. Let's put in the chat, if you regularly use rubrics for, if not all, most of your classes, I'll start off by saying no. Um, so it'd be just nice to see what others do and get a sense of that. If you can put in chat. Thank you, Nabila for the message. We have about 10 minutes left, everyone. So we have a couple of rubrics and Christina, we'll go back to the slides and I'll keep looking. Thanks, Matt and Laura. I, I had a hand up. I, I'm, I would love to say something, but if you want me to wait, cause you've got 10 minutes, that's perfectly fine too. No, please speak now. Um, well, just this, this idea of like the single point rubric, I've not heard it called that before, but it makes me think, you know, that, that a lot of times we want our students to also learn how to engage in professional practices. And as a professional, there are two things that I want that kind of aren't in my control. I want grant funding and I want uh, journals to publish my work. And in both of those cases, they'll often have sheets that are like that, that let me go through and make sure I'm doing and fulfilling other people's expectations. And so it seems like that's also a really good theory to practice kind of thing. So I was just thinking about that as you were sharing it. Thanks. Thank Helpful. you. Thank right. you. So where were we, Christina? And let's march forward in the remaining nine minutes. I think it's it's part of the um, you know rubric mm -hmm. or um, providing uh, feedback. Um, you know, yeah, the, these are some some of the things we've talked about as yeah, examples so this on is revisions. That we've talked about something that I haven't showed, and it's just uh, I mean it's it's kind of a, a fun reminder. Uh, when I was talking to Scott about giving feedback, I told him that I always think about giving feedback as, you know, my persona should be a mixture of Simon, Paula, and Randy, the original uh, American Idol judges that, you know, the um, sort of the, you know, the, the very direct response, Simon, you know, this is horrible, or just, uh, and then Paula would say, oh, you know, your your nails are beautiful, and your hair looks good, so just, you know, having that, that plus, you know, thrown in there, and then Randy, who was like, you know, that's good, good for you, and just, and just um you know you, you you worked hard yes but still just you know make sure right, right, right. Right. That. hard work is not enough but good job on the work <laughs> yes so that's you know this is something uh i will share the link um of our presentations and i highly recommend this video because and the reason why i included this but we don't really have time to play the whole thing but it's basically one of the contestants who brings in the parent and it's almost like trying to talk to the judges and I feel that you know we're in the era where sometimes the students are pushing the parents to fight for them <laughs> as well but then you know the judges make it very clear like no it's still a no sorry <laughs> and so that's just, just one thing to you know as a side note thank you And let me just go to, so we talked about the, the grading rubrics. Right, so we're we're getting close to the end of our session. Yes, yes. So this, this is, is when- perfectly timed, yes. I, I pointing, literally was made, pointing a finger at the teacher. <laughs> yes, yes, and I made a note, Christina, here is, you know, what grade would you give yourself in terms of the feedback you're giving thinking about that and then you know what might you want to change 
based on the grade you give yourself. So it's sort of a reductive self meta exercise, so to speak, of just thinking about what you're doing and, and perhaps how it can be improved. And Christina there, the middle point is listening to students. Um, and I do this regularly, reading as we I'm sure most of us here do is the narrative comments on the evaluations to get ideas. I do, like many of us do a mid-course evaluation. You know, what ideas do you have? What works for you? How can I change? What, 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 what's better? And I really recommend the um, the midterm feedback that CTRL offers, you know, and, and I've tried it out. And, uh, and of course, you know, nobody likes to hear something that, you know, especially if you worked on something, you think, oh, this is really going to work with my students. It's research-based, it's tested, it's active learning. And then the CTRL person comes like, yeah, they don't really like that. And then you're thinking, oh man, really? <laughs> And but having the conversation with the students and they are they were very honest. And, and I said, so I hear that you guys don't like it really because I think and they're like, no, yeah, if you could just not do that, not include that. OK, and then I just, you know, I, I let it go. And um, and sometimes, uh, yeah, I mean, you know what Scott said, the the, the student narratives. Yes, sometimes students, oh, it's too much homework. It's too much this. Okay, sorry, you know, you're in college, so you're going to have to read and write. But um, <laughs> but when they say things like, you know, I would appreciate if somebody returned our work on time. So it's, you know, we want a faster turnout. Um, we want, you know, more specific, you know, those are things that, you know, I've changed so much in my pedagogy based on student feedback. Just, you know, listen yep. to them. Or if you have, you know, a program leader in the complex problems, I often tell my program leaders, like, you know, give me some intel. Like, what are they saying? What do they like? What do they not like? Because they think that's valuable. They trust the program leader. And so they will tell them what should be different or what could be different. Avery, what are your thoughts as we close out? Um, I... I'm glad you mentioned it because the mid semester check ins are really helpful. I see in the chat that students are sometimes unreliable, which I know is true even for the um, final semester, the SET evaluations that we have to do for most of our classes. Um, people are worried about an anonymity, and that is um, a factor. But I think creating an environment where students feel comfortable providing that feedback, um, I'll use Professor Callan as an example. Um, you open the floor for feedback from students that makes people feel comfortable to have um, a conversation about what they feel like they can improve on or what the class could improve on without it seeming like they're in some way questioning your abilities as a professor or trying to avoid, um, you know, actually doing the assignment. I think as long as it's a mutually respectful space, um, there's a lot of room for growth, which is um, the environment that you want as a student, I would say. Yes, and it's wonderful to hear and interesting now to see Rate My Professors, the obviously unofficial, unsanctioned evaluations. Christina, what are your comments on this? Because you've done a little sort of research on this and observation of, of professors on this site. Right, and uh, my general conclusion is, you know, please go and search yourself and see what students are saying about your teaching methods because just like the student narratives on the SATs, this is also helpful. They're not going to make up anything crazy about you. It's, it's their perspective and it's their sort of unfiltered perspective. What I recommend is before you search yourself and read the comments from the students, you should probably watch a recording of Jimmy Kimmel's mean tweets. So then you can get into that mindset of laughing about what other people get, you know, these celebrities and how they learn to laugh about themselves. And those are mean tweets. <laughs> and just take it like, you know, something like that and, you know, and learn to laugh. But then also, you know, think about it like, oh, yeah, I do do that. <laughs> and maybe I should, you know, or if they say yeah. something positive, like do more of that. You know, it's. It's actually a, a fun tool. And I do encourage my students to go and and say what they what they feel, because I I find it that they, they just go, like I said, unfiltered and sort of more honest sometimes than than the the student evaluations. So it's nice to have both. 
Um, I've actually reduced my uh, workload in an introductory course several years ago because a student made a great point, like there's way too much work for an intro class. And frankly, they were right. So I think we are very close to time's up. I want to thank everyone for joining us. I want to give a shout out to Avery for taking the time during break to be here and give us the student perspective. Um, and Christina so for, and thank you for joining us, Avery. Um, and Christina, for you for putting these slides together, together and keeping us organized, which is not one of my strengths. So it's it's great to work with you and Bruce and, and Brian and Michelle and others. Thanks for all your contributions and CTRL staff, Mac and Shed and others, thank you too. And Nabila as well. We have a survey there that's there. Uh, Samantha, thank you. Uh, and thanks for your thanks to Avery in the chat. And everyone, let's have a wonderful start to 2024 semester. Uh, we'll see you, I'm sure, on some other CTRL and Farron conferences. And uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to take over the screen for a second so that you guys can scan the QR code that we have. And I've also shared the survey link in the chat. I'm gonna have the QR code open for like 30 seconds and then I can end the meeting for everyone. Right. Nabila, thank you. Yeah, of course. I guess I forgot to mention that I put the link in the chat, but hopefully people <laughs> saw that. Yes, <laughs> I clicked that one. Okay, good. All right. Well, Thank you, Christina. We'll see you in another session. Good luck you. in the other ones. Hopefully I'll see most of you tomorrow. You got it. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Um, I hope you could Thanks. scan the QR code. I am... Once again, dropping the link in the chat. Um, please give us your feedback and thank you everyone for the wonderful discussion. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks.